Aside from death and taxes, nothing in life is guaranteed or absolutely certain. However, encountering probability problems on your digital SAT math test comes really close to that absolute. My name is Will. I'm with Principia Tutors and Consultants, and we're going to be going over some probability-based strategies today. So today's topics, we'll introduce and review what probability is, we'll cover some simple probability, and then we'll go over how to calculate probability with and without replacement. Quick reminder for y'all, probability is the likelihood of an event occurring out of all possible events. And so you take your desired outcome divided by the total number of outcomes to get the probability. Make sure you read the question carefully to answer it correctly. And so if it's asking for your answer as a decimal, give it as a decimal, as a fraction, give it as a fraction, and if it's a percent, give it as a percent. Remember, convert your answers as needed, round to the specified decimal place, reduce and simplify your fractions, either if you can't see your answer provided, or if you're told that it needs to meet a specific requirement. So like with the grid in questions, you only have five character spaces, and so if your fraction exceeds that, you'll need to reduce or simplify it. Or check your work to see if you may have made a mistake. All right, so when we see the word and between two probabilities, that means we need to multiply them. So if I want to know the probability of A and B occurring, it's probability A times probability B. If we see or between probabilities, we need to add them. So the probability of A or probability B occurring, we just add probability A and probability B. All your probabilities will sum to one. The notation we'll use for probability of an event occurring would be P event or P outcome. The likelihood of something not occurring denoted by P naught is just one minus the probability of that event occurring. Okay, so with and without replacement, what does that mean? When we say probability with replacement, we're referring to an inexhaustible group. And so the numbers don't change. In this example with the 20 marbles in the bag, I start with three red marbles and the likelihood of drawing a red marble at random is three out of 20. Since I replace the marble in the bag, that likelihood never changes. So the first, second, third, etc. draw will always be three out of 20. Without replacement deals with an exhaustible group, which means as I draw marbles from the bag in this example and don't replace them, I am changing individual probabilities with each draw. So the first pull again is going to be three out of 20, but then with one less marble in the bag, one less red marble specifically in this instance, I would then only have a 2 out of 19 chance of drawing a red marble. And this would reduce until after drawing 3 marbles, there's just no likelihood of me pulling it. And so this would account for the change in the total. As you draw more and more marbles, you're reducing both the total number of marbles and the individual number of specifically colored marbles. All right, let's try a problem without a graph or figure. So take a moment, pause the video, attempt to solve it on your own. We'll jump back in in a couple seconds. All right, whenever you're working on problems like these, I recommend using your scratch paper or note-taking tools to keep track of your solution steps to make sure you can avoid any simple errors. So starting with the given and known information, we have 300 total and 210 of the total have already been accounted for, leaving us with 90 customers that purchased coffee, ice cream that Wednesday. So the probability of randomly drawing someone who did purchase coffee, ice cream would just be 90 over 300, or 3 over 10, or 0.3, or 30%. So the question would specify how to provide your answer. All right, now if we're using a graph figure, table, chart, etc., take a moment, read through the question, pause the video, try solving it on your own, and we'll pick up momentarily. All right, what we can see from the first question, so question A, we want the likelihood of selecting just one individual who is either a female or or a male elf, or means we add the probabilities. Remember, we start with 200 total. 22 of those orcs are female, so 22 out of 200. 28 of the elves are male, so 28 out of 200. And so the probability of either an orc female or a male elf would just be 22 over 200 plus 28 over 200. So you'd get 50 over 200, which reduces to 0.25. Why am I leaving my answer as 0.25? Because the question specifies give the answer as a decimal. For part B, it says and. It wants us to first select the orc male 
and then the male elf. So the AM lets us know we need to multiply the probabilities. Orc male is 78 over 200. Elf male is 28 over 200. Multiplying them out, our answer would round to 0 0.055 to account for the five character spaces that you would be given on a written question. And remember to use your calculator or Desmos to solve quickly. All right, let's do some probability with replacement without the accompanying graph or figure. So this problem, we got 12 cards. As stated, four students. It notes that we are replacing the cards each time, so it's shuffled back in. Pause the video, try to solve each of the parts on your own, and we'll review together in a couple seconds. All right, so part A is specifying it's three students. One and two and three get the same card. Since there's replacement, the probabilities won't change. And so it's an and probability, multiply everything out. Since drawing a club is a one in four probability, it's just one fourth cubed to give us 164 for everything. Question wants us to answer as a fraction, so we're good to go. All right, part B is asking that no student receives the same card in the specific order, club, heart, diamond, and spade. And so we're multiplying those probabilities by one another to ultimately result in a 0.347%. That's rounded to five character spaces and it's giving the answer as a percent as specified by the question. Now, the probability that no student is dealt a diamond, here, what we're looking for is the P not. And so what we can do is we can sum the non-diamond probabilities and then multiply them. And since cards are replaced each time, the non-diamond probability will not change. So if there are only four diamonds, that means eight of the 12 cards are going to be not diamond. And so we're essentially just saying eight over 12 multiplied by itself four times. And so two thirds to the fourth power gives us a 0.198 probability. And since they're asking for the answer as a decimal, that's how we'd wanna list it. Okay, now what about if there isn't replacement with these cards? So very similar phrasing for the questions, but we do need to make some changes to how we solve them. Go ahead, pause the video, attempt to answer them on your own, and we'll go over them. All right, so now first three students receiving a club, since after drawing a card, the student will keep it and it's not replaced, we have to account for that in our probabilities. So the club on the first draw, is most certainly still three out of 12. However, once that club is drawn, we would only have two clubs left and a total of 11 cards remaining. And so it would continue until we're out of clubs. So the first three students receiving a club would be three twelfths multiplied by two elevenths multiplied by one tenth. We end up with a one in 220 likelihood. Since it's asking for our answer as a fraction, it's good to go. The second question, once our answer as a percent, and now it's saying no student or the students receive the cards in that order. So no student receives the same card as another student. But now without the replacement, the likelihood is going to decrease. The total number of cards will decrease with each draw. And so as we start with the club, 3 twelfths, but then the chance of getting a heart is 3 elevenths because now we haven't changed the number of hearts, but the number of total cards has changed so on and so forth until we end up with 1 in 165, which is about 0.606% rounded to five character spaces. Finally, no student being dealt a diamond. Again, we sum the total non-diamond options, but then as we draw a not diamond, we have to reduce that number and the total number of cards. And so starting with eight over 12, but then it becomes seven over 11 and you keep reducing by one in the numerator and denominator until you've multiplied out four times, resulting in a 0 0.141 when rounded to five character spaces and it gives the answer as a decimal. Okay, let's do another with replacement, but this time we'll use a graph or figure. And so first we're asked store selling one console. What is the probability all stores sold a PS5? Make sure you give your answer as a percent. Just be sure to note that any store means we need to multiply individual probabilities for each store. With that clue, pause the video, attempt to solve it on your own. 
All right, welcome back. When I mentioned before that we want to list out the known values, so first thing, the probability of a PS5 from store 1, 97 out of 335. From store 2, 116 out of 335. I'm just using the values given from the table. That's where the numbers are coming from. And from store 3, it's 111 out of 506. And store 4 is 145 out of 445. And so if I want to know all stores selling that console, I would need to multiply all of these probabilities, and that would yield a 0.717%. Seeing as we've been asked to give the answer as a percent, we're good to go. Now for this next question, without replacement, and so three stores, sorry, three consoles sold from any store on Saturday, the probability none of these are switch consoles. And so make sure you give your answer as a decimal around to the nearest thousandth. And so it wants us to calculate the probability that no switch consoles are sold. So remember, just like we did with the cards, tally all non-switch consoles for the stores. So with that hint, pause the video, attempt to solve it on your own. We'll review shortly. Okay, so stores A through D, as we sum it up, that's our PS5 total, and stores A through D, Xbox total. So you got your 469 and your 535 out of the 1621 total. And so essentially summing them gives us our not switch totals for all the stores, which is 1,004 out of 1621. And for three consoles to not sell a switch, you multiply and as you sell a not switch, that console is removed from the total. And so without the replacement, and so as we go from 1,004, it becomes 1,003, then 1,002, and we also would reduce our denominator by one each time. Multiplying these out gives us a likelihood or a probability of 0 0.237 rounded and left as five character spaces. So it's rounded to the thousandth as we were told and it also meets the criterion for a grid in of five character spaces. All right, second part of the question. What's the probability that at least one switch console is sold? Take a moment, pause the video, try to remember what we were discussing when we went over the likelihood of an event not occurring and then the likelihood of that event occurring, how they're related. All right, I'll check in with you in a couple seconds. All right, so with this example, since we only need one instance where a switch console sells, we have enough information, since all probabilities will sum to one, we have the likelihood of a not switch as 0.237, which means the likelihood of selling at least one switch is just one minus that probability. And so this will result in a 0.763. Don't stop there because you are asked to give it as a percent. So remember to convert it to a percentage, which is 76.3%. When told to provide an answer in a specific way, make sure you do that. Don't lose a point on your official test because you forget to make that change. All right, we'll do a quick recap of our strategies. So remember, or means you add probabilities and means you multiply them. Remember to list your answer as a fraction, decimal, or percent based on what the question wants. Do what it tells you to get the point. Don't forget to round to the nearest place value as indicated. If there's no indication for grid ends, you have five character spaces. For multiple choice, you'll want to select the answer choice that is either closest to yours or maybe a reduced version of yours. Assuming you've done the math correctly, that should work. Just be sure to organize your steps so you can check yourself quickly. Remember all probabilities sum to one. The probability of not outcome X is just one minus the probability of outcome X. With replacement means your individual probabilities won't change. Without means your probabilities will change every time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're feeling more confident, confident about how to tackle the probability questions and content on your official digital SAT math test. And if you found any of this helpful, please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out our other videos in the channel, and thanks so much again. This is Will with Principia Tutors and Consultants, signing off.